What is up guys, the day has finally come, GPT-5 just got released and I was able to run GPT-5 through my own personal test that I run the majority of the models through, that includes creating a Super Mario game to the best extent that it possibly can through a single prompt itself, creating a couple of websites, a Minesweeper game, and a bunch of other different things that I was able to deduce from the actual live stream. It's really interesting to pair the rumors that I've been going over within my GPT-5 rumor videos with the actual reality that we're seeing today. Without a further ado, enjoy. So let's get right into it. The first one that we're going to be looking at, and this is essentially one of the key tests that I run across like all models, as you can see right here, Claude, Deep Sea, Grok 4, GPT-5, finally the day has come. I think a lot of us have been waiting for this day for quite some time. Claude, Opus, etc. Like every single model, like I, I primarily test them on this prompt. So GPT-5 Mario, as you can see, the entire code base is here. Now, this is something that I generated using not the actual platform itself, but I was forced to use the API playground because where I'm at, it's not currently available, but it is available on the API playground along with GPT-5 Nano and GPT-5 Mini and GPT-5 Chat latest. For this, the question that I essentially gave it was, I need a Super Mario clone that's as detailed as possible and this is what we got uh, quite possibly the most detailed super mario clone that i've seen up until this point and like as i mentioned i've tested all models on this this is without any assets this is purely with like just pi and sprites and uh, you know the most basic graphics that you could do i'm sure if we pumped assets into it it would look like significantly better the controls work just fine the logic also works just fine now of course there's no pipes as you can see the general super mario pipes that you would have here but everything works exactly as expected with a coin slash point system you can't exactly interact with most of the box is here and the enemy system is a little bit stupid because typically you jump on him and then he'd die and you'd be able to uh, continue and you'd even score points from that so there is a little bit of tweaking but the level design and the the amount of like attention that it gave to the general mechanics of the super mario game are pretty impressive especially for a one-shot prompt considering that uh, we're able to get this that's pretty good now keep in mind i did have a slight error which i think is primarily because of the python version that i have and the python version that it thinks i have so i think there was a bit of a syntax error so i did have to use the um, cursor agent in order to essentially fix that uh, just to make sure and then it went ahead and started making some other slight alterations as well So I had to stop it halfway, but uh, Nonetheless GPT-5 is good when it comes to one-shotting Super Mario next up What I also did is I asked it to design a website for a wedding planning business because in the live stream They basically boasted about GPT-5's design skills and to be honest I was uh pleasantly surprised this is what we got right here from literally a single prompt of design me a wedding uh planning business website your love story flawlessly orchestrated i have no doubt that the copywriting on this website is amazing with a good gradient background as you can see right here and not like that plain white reviews as well trusted by 200 couples of course if you click here nothing's gonna happen but somehow it also pulled stock assets uh, for the actual website itself. Good website planning as well. So starting off with what we do, comprehensive planning for a seamless day with a subsection right here for the actual services, full service planning, partial planning, budget and timeline, destination weddings, the different packages and prices that are essentially offered with a call to action on all, start your proposal, book a consult, etc. Honestly, pretty good. And this is from a uh, single file HTML file. Like th there's no assets, there's no CSS, no styling. I very, very impressive. Most likely the most impressive website that I've had coded up until this point. Next up, I also asked it to basically create a Minesweeper clone, as you can see right here with a very simple sentence, very simple prompt, just create a Minesweeper prompt using HTML. I think Python would have been better for this but we did it with html nonetheless now within the actual live stream there were a couple of like weird ass graphs <laughs> that like i don't even understand like how they were able to basically make them uh an example of which you'll basically see here where they try to like accentuate the 10 percent increase by like I, I don't even know like here it's 30.8 and then 69.1 right which is identical to 30.8 and then GPT-5 is at like 74.9. Like graph skills here are like literally zero. I don't know what their team was thinking when they were like creating this. It looked very impressive on the actual live stream, but then when you actually look at the numbers, you're like, wait a minute, like what, what is like going on here? So I'm not sure if they did that on purpose, most likely not, but uh, 
they definitely need to double verify or double check their actual graphs themselves. Then on HLE, which is humanity's last exam, GPT-5 essentially scored less than Grok 4 heavy, uh, based on what I remember from Grok 4. It scored like, I don't know, approximately 40. And then as, our, as far as I remember, Grok 4 heavy scored 44.4. And this is percent with regards to HLE itself. So it isn't, and I mean, HLE is like the most definitive benchmark that we currently have. Uh, and it is truthfully humanity's last exam from the looks of it, uh, because we are running out of benchmarks, but it doesn't seem like GPT-5 is the smartest uh, model out there. It, it does seem like Grok4 heavy with Python plus internet, purely based on the HLE benchmark itself, which a lot of people trust, seems to be the most superior model when it comes to actual intelligence itself. Though, I don't know, uh, GPT-5 scored close, but it, it did not over exceed or even exceed uh, Grok4 heavy itself when it comes to HLE. Here we also just essentially see additional people taking the piss of the actual charts themselves because the charts on this live stream were like bizarre. Like I was even afraid to comment because I'm like, surely I'm hallucinating. <laughs> like it's, it's unbelievable that a company of this caliber would make such mistakes, but whatever. Additionally here, we also see Sam Altman basically produce this, which uh, does give a sense of multimodality that we haven't seen before, essentially in sound production and in audio track production. So if I play this right here, you'll actually hear the sound and the prompt is use a beat bot to make a sick beat to celebrate GPT-5. And this is directly on GPT-5 and it composes a track and it's essentially the following. Uh, which is something that we haven't seen before in GPT-4.0 or anything else. Essentially, the way that it looks is that they've taken GPT-4.0 and O3, they've made O3 better, and then they've taken the friendliness and likability and uh, partial psychophantism, if that's the actual word itself. I'm referring to uh, GPT-4.0 being psychophantic at several points mixed it up and uh, essentially just created a single model itself. Now, based on the live stream, it's on essentially everything that we're seeing from, you know, the rollout, uh, GPT-5 is gonna be available to literally every plan out there from free plus to pro, but every single plan will essentially have different limits. And once you ex overextend your limits or once you're essentially rate limited, you're gonna be downgraded to a model called GPT-5 mini. As per expectations, everybody essentially expected a 1 million token context input limit. I always screw up that four word sentence because it needs to be directly in order, otherwise it loses its meaning. And the key reason behind this was primarily because of Gemini 2.5 Pro and the model before it, which essentially introduced it and everybody like became crazy about it. Now everybody expected that this would definitely be a possibility with GPT-5, primarily because of GPT-4.1, which had this only for the API though, on the platform it didn't but it seems like the API context limit for GPT-5 is 400,000 tokens. So on the platform, it's most likely less. I'm assuming around 200,000, if I'm not mistaken, which in most cases is more than enough. Now there's a couple of benchmarks that they also mentioned that are primarily for long context-based tests and GPT-5 exceeds all other models in the performance there. So we can rest assured that, you know, despite the fact that we don't have a 1 million input limit, even with a 200K or a 400K, as they've mentioned, we should still be able to do a, a, a possibly more than we've been able to do with O3 before. Now they revealed absolutely nothing with regards to the architecture itself, with regards to the parameters, the weights, the biases, the mixture of experts that they're using. Like we had evidently uh, more information with regards to the architecture itself on the open source model release than we had on GPT-5. So we have no information there whatsoever, but we are seeing additional multimodality. So we haven't seen like the ability to input a YouTube video directly in GPT-5 and then have an output based on that. But instead what we saw is what I showcased with the Sam Altman post where it can essentially start generating sound for you which is something new that we haven't seen before. The live stream itself also placed great emphasis on the agentic function of GPT-5, particularly when paired up with Cursor. That seems to be something that they're definitely proud of and essentially its ability to one-shot entire apps through an agentic flow. So that's 
definitely something that I want to try out next and that I recommend you do as well because it was something that they put a lot of significance on within the actual live stream itself as well as tool and API calling and essentially the entire agentic flow itself. All in all, it feels like they took GPT-40 and 03, made 03 a bit better, mixed it up together and essentially created one product that you can basically use with GPT-5 mini as well once you actually hit the limit itself. Additionally, we also expected the model selector to be entirely removed it seems like it is but you can restore legacy models through the actual settings themselves which is nice because a lot of us you know also enjoy using models like 03 independently or or, or 04 etc these are actually good models that many of us enjoy using for whatever reason whatsoever so it's good that okay they removed the models but they've still kept the model selector through the legacy settings and that's with regards to that the day has finally come and the only question that remains is when gpt6 I'll catch you guys on the next one.